If I won the lotto tomorrow, I would still do everything I'm doing now. I'd be here talking to you. I'd be making Facebook videos. I'd be on Snapchat doing Q&As. I'd be making my podcast. There was a time when I, three, four years ago, I was still working as a primary school teacher in London where I didn't realize that I'd have, you know, 50,000 followers on Facebook, 50,000 on Instagram, you know, uh, best podcast and the, the h- highest ranking podcast in Ireland. All of these things would have been really unrealistic, which is, which is your own self-created limitation, would have been unrealistic at the time. So now I set my bar and I never let my own limitations of thought ever cap where I want to go. But I actually had a conversation with a guy I'm working with in, in London and he was asking me something very similar. He's very well off. The guy is doing very well for himself. Um, but he, he hates what he does. And he's like, how do you find your why? He's like, how do you find what you love to do? And I was like, okay. I was like, what, what, would, you, what would you do for free? So we had that conversation. I was like, what do you get up in the morning thinking about? I was like, what do you go to bed at night dreaming about? I was like, it's that. I went off that path because you had, you know, people that were powerful in your life. You know, my dad, my uncles, aunties, people like that are like, well, go this route. This is the safe route. This is the steady route. Go and do that. And, and when I left it, because I went through the system and I was a teacher and it, teaching the scene perceived as a good job, you know, nice holidays, good pay, pension, all the steady stuff. And when I left, I was literally called everything from an idiot to a fool. I talked about in a section of the book about opinions and perspectives. We once thought the fucking world was flat. Like, that when we knew the world was flat. You know, until Aristotle came out and was like, well, the circumference of it says it's probably round. And we were like, okay, no, it's not. And now we're like, well, we know the world is round. Because what happened? More information was available. The perspective changed. The opinion changed. And now everyone's like, well, of course the world is round. How do people think it was flat? That was stupid. These same people that told me that I couldn't do it or shouldn't do it or was stupid to do it are the same people who were like I knew you'd make it I'm like you didn't though I was like you didn't they were that's not what you said to me three years ago the people that are doing what they love haven't let the fear stop them that's the only difference because the fear is there for everybody the only difference between me now and I'll use myself because you're your own best example the only difference between the me of now and the me of four years ago is I feel the fucking fear now like everybody else I just don't let it stop me there was a time when I had no money and had to fucking go through my couch to get money for the bus and I could barely afford an audiobook you know but you invest in yourself and you build an, on that now I'm fortunate enough that I was going to seminars and now I get to work with people like you know I'm working with Tony Robbins in, in June and Jack Canfield and these people that are really successful in their areas this is where you get a little bit of an issue with fitness because when you're scrolling through Instagram and Facebook and seeing you know big massive jacked up dudes you're like you're never going to be big enough you're never going to be ripped enough you're never going to look the way you want nobody ever is if you're comparing yourself against others but you can be better than you were yesterday better than you were a month ago and that's when you're using that as your bear that's when you move forward i love the quote comparison is the thief of joy i had that printed on my wall for nearly two years because it's something i had to tattoo onto my brain because i constantly did it and it's something we all do it it's automatic like it's something that we all do we compare ourselves to other people we compare ourselves to how we look we compare ourselves to how much we earn. We compare ourselves to, you know, our ability in sport or whatever it is. And we all do that. And your comparison against someone else is always going to make you miserable. The main thing I see is among successful people, they learn to get shit done regardless of whether they want to do it or not. Every single successful person that I have personally met that I consider successful subjectively has some form of training, exercise or meditation routine. Anything that disconnects you from the world temporarily, which is what training and exercise does, when you're doing your last rep on squats or, you know, a minute on a burpee or whatever it is, your heart's going through the roof, you're not thinking about, you know, your worries in day-to-day life. People are always going to tell you you can't do something but you can't let other people's vision of you become your own reality and if you're waiting for permission you're never going to get it or if you are waiting for permission I'm giving giving it to you now go do whatever it is that you need to do do the thing that you love and don't let anybody tell you you can't because you're going to get that everybody that is going to strive for what they want most is going to have haters naysayers and people telling them they can't do it you need to rise above that if you're going to achieve it